So hi, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Ching Kyung Lam. Um, I'm a founder and CEO of Pato.ai. Uh, a bit of a background by my company. Uh, Pato AI started two years ago with an invitation from National Science Foundation from the SBIR grant funding investigating LLM and BERT. We did a LLM BERT driven uh, drug discovery application. Uh, since then we branched out to leverage what we learned about building AI system for large corporation. We are currently building expert AI system for several clients. Currently, the system we build goes beyond the rack system. Um, many of our clients is asking for AI system that perform tasks like a research and advisory role based on their area of interest. Uh, today, the talk is about sharing with our fellow AI engineer what we learned so far building this kind of system. Okay. Uh, what is knowledge? Okay, generally, philosophically, I say uh, knowledge is the understanding and awareness gained through experience, education, and a comprehension of facts and principles. And that leads to the next question is what is knowledge graph, right? So knowledge graph is a systematic method of preserving wisdom by connecting them and creating a network or interconnect relationship. That's important. The graph represents the thought process. And comprehensive taxonomy of a specific domain of expertise. That's why this is very important for people moving forward. It's about AI system then think a lot and return uh, advice instead of just retrieve you know, data from your database. Right? So that comes to the development of this uh, KAG. Okay, what is KAG? KAG stands for Knowledge Augment Generations and it's different from RAG, okay? It is enhanced language model by integrating structured knowledge graph for more accurate and insightful response, making it smarter, more structured approach than a simple rack. KAG doesn't just retrieve. Remember, it understands that this is different. Okay, after interviewing a lot of my clients, okay, so we also an uh, expert in a certain area of scale, I found that there are common ways of their thinking, decision-making process. The way that make them expert in their area, knowledge graph seems to be a perfect fit. So here is a graph or state diagram if you're a computer engineering grad like me. So um, it shows a wisdom, the, the wisdom note, as you can see, is the is a core, right? This wisdom it just it isn't static. It actively guides decision and fuels by other elements. The output from the wisdom actually goes to decision making in the blue, right? Wisdom isn't passive. It guides decision, helping us choose wisely, okay? And then the decision making analyzes the situation it given in the circle in the uh, green, and decision aren't make you know, in a vacuum, okay? They analyze real world situation. That's the difference, okay? So look at the wisdom input, okay? Look at the relationship feedback from the knowledge to wisdom in gold color. Example of that is knowledge to wisdom. Like all your book smart and encyclopedia, Wikipedia, whatever you store. Plus, once that data get absorbed by LLM, whatever model you use up there, it needs to regurgitate that and understand. That's why it's very important that wisdom is able to synthesize the data after you ingested knowledge. Yeah, that's a kind of abstract, but I'll, I'll come, we'll come to that later. How about I'm talking about? Okay. okay, from inside, example of that is wisdom derived pattern from chaos. Like some of my clients has a lot of social media, they, their product, how do they you know, track their product sediment from, from social media, right? So it's very chaotic and from X tweet, right? So, so from that, you can see some pattern of their competitor versus uh, current what my product is. That, that's like an example of that, and I will go to that later. Okay, when all these connected nodes matter together, why do they matter? All the nodes relate to one another to ever increase, uh, um, enriching a uh, wisdom storing system. Okay, this talk is about storing wisdom, right? So knowledge tells you what it is, right? And experience tell you what worked before. Insight invent what to try next. Like, like a pizza, knowledge is recipe, 
experience is knowing your oven burn crust. Inside is like, hey, it is at adding you know, honey to the crust, you make caramelize perfectly, right? So the most important part of the knowledge graph is feedback loop, okay? Feedback isn't one way street. It learns from itself. Look at the feedback from the, uh, going back to all the notes from inside to wisdom, okay? Um, situation informs future wisdom. Experience, deepen it. Insight, sharpen it. Like a tree growing roots. The more it fat, the stronger it gets. Now, I want to ask you a question in general. Where do you see this circle in your life? Maybe a tough decision that you know, taught you something? So one practical application for leadership is wisdom, avoid knee-jack reaction by learning from feedback. As for personal growth, ever notice how past mistakes make you wiser? That's the loop in the action, all this. So the takeaway from the slide in this is wisdom isn't a trophy you earn. It is a muscle you exercise. The more you feed knowledge, experience, insight, the more they guide you. Now, I will show you how it being mapped to my current client. You know, all this is like very abstract, right? So how I, one of my clients is actually doing a competitive analysis. Uh, they used to have a marketing department doing that, but they want AI to do that, right? They, they asked me to build the system. This is exactly what I did with the same taxonomy of storing all this. So this talk, taxonomy will be later on, I talk about how multi agents is going to handle all that. Here is one of the chatbots that I built for my client to do, you know, not just some, uh, we, not just some chatbot, okay, it's our wisdom graph power AI designed to turn data into strategy, right, dominant. So what kind of question I talk about? I talk about how do I win my competitor in this market space? That's kind of a very sophisticated question, right? So without, uh, if, if you do simply just write by word, first speaker talk about write, right? So it's not going to cut it. They're not going to be able to answer that kind of question, okay? What I did is this, uh, we retain the same test on me and the, uh, the wisdom is then mapped, the same engine there, the wisdom engine. This engine is like an orchestration agent that does a lot of decision making, including advising what the, the ARM is able to see based on the current situation, what to do next, right? So um, what I did is uh, for the uh, decision making, I map it to a strategy generator. So these customers talk, are talking about a competitive analysis, right? So um, I map the knowledge in terms of knowledge. What do they have? They have market data. Right, so I map this experience to HP is one of a kind. Okay, past campaign, so they have a lot of campaign doing a lot of uh, marketing, and then um, the insight is actually mapped to uh, in industrial insight. So they have a database doing sorting that, and then of course the most important is this. The, the situation. The situation is how, how am I doing? How are my product selling? Right. So so that that is like a situation, and then I map that to a competitor weakness. That means to say, if you make the LM aware of that, you probably get a very good answer, and then in, you know, the chatbot will probably be doing the right thing, advising. So from here, very high level, you know, state diagram or that. How do I map it to a system that drive? Well, here comes the trick. So anybody here heard of NAN? All right, all right, it's all good. So, so I, I first encountered a similar situation when I, my past IoT project, which is not rate developed by uh, uh, IBM, right? So it's the same kind of thing, it's like no code, but, but underneath the hood, there's a bunch of code, okay? It's all Node.js code, okay? So, uh, but, but for, the, for, for proving your concept and all that, it's very, very, very flexible. And I, I right, highly recommend that, and, and, and here, here you can take a look at the, the workflow, the workflow, I enable the implementation of this complicated state diagram with um, uh, what I say is, there is a different community node. One of the very powerful nodes is the AI agent. Well, previously, NAN is just a workflow automation tool. I'm not selling for NAN here. I'm just telling you I'm using it uh, for pro prototyping. Uh, further down the road, maybe the client say, oh, it's too, like, I, I really need to you know, go lightweight. Maybe we'll switch over to some other lang chain or whatever. But uh, we actually use this, like, I mapped the previous uh, state diagram from the wisdom engine. I actually mapped that to our, our wisdom agent. Okay, Western agent is now have the option to drive uh, different model like OpenAI model, Entropic model, and even on-prem model. And then that 
the key in making the state, uh, mach the state machine work is that my wisdom agent is now overseeing, like a supervisory agent, uh, all these other agents that do uh, whatever I say on the state diagram. Um, for example, the uh, state of uh, going into a node of insight, insight agent will test to do go to the social media, look for all the sediment of all your product, and then collect that, and then pump that. The, you can see that at the dot, uh, bottom that uh, we, I connected to a, 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 a centralized uh, graph. The centralized graph will be able to get updated by different agents. Uh, inside agent will update the, here, their perspective, like part of that graph for the, uh, as I say, for this particular uh, uh, inside node. So, so all the unified knowledge graph will contain the taxonomy that eventually just think like the marketing strategies, the way that here they will probably if you are doing manually, they probably would think in your, in your SharePoint will all this, you know, folder will start the same kind of, uh, you know, wisdom I call it, to make decision based on that. So the, the final decision is LLM also depend on the model that you use, uh, but I, 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 I pretty, much think that not really the way that I think the final decision come when you make the right decision from the advisor output is basically depend on all the taxonomy, the graph structure. That's very important. So come to that, I, I want to go deep down how I implement one of the nodes, uh, just to go a bit technical on this competitive node, how do I implement that. Okay, before I do that, okay, competitive analysis, well, what, what, well, you can actually just use RAG. Why do you want to use a knowledge graph like uh, Neo4j? Well, if you ever being asked that question, tell them these five, uh, five reasons. Okay, first reason is knowledge graph you know, uh, system excel at capturing and representing complex relationship with the entities. That is covered by the first speaker, but I'll just reintegrate that. This leads to a deeper contextual understanding, which is crucial for competitive analysis, where this, in this case, the nuance Insight can be significant, make a significant difference. Okay, you want to find the gap in your computer weakness. Now, this is very important. The second is improve accuracy by leveraging structured data and semantics relationship. Knowledge graph can provide more accurate and relevant information compared to traditional vector racks. Um, this ensure generated content is not only relevant but also precise and reduce the noise and improve decision making. Making this in this case. The board is supposed to help the guy that is marketing department make decisions. So, so you better make this work, improve accuracy. Any inaccurate data, you will be out of the contract, out of the door, right? So that's very important, okay? You're talking about contract work like me. I have to make the rank as accurate as possible. So the third is scalability and flexibility. They are graphic, you know, knowledge graph are inherently scalable and can integrate to new data source and relationship. The flexibility allows the continuous improvement, as I say, you see, taxonomy is correct. You will continue to improve and, and reach, right? So, so that is important. And also, rich query capability. Knowledge graph support complex query drivers to multiple relationship entity, provide richer and more detailed insight. This is particularly advantage for a competitive analysis when multifaceted query, like, like what the first speaker said, it is super authority good in answering things that Normal, uh, normal rag will fail. It's like multi-hop question. Okay, this is very important. And then the final one is the enhanced data integration. Uh, knowledge graph can seamlessly integrate diverse data source, pictures, graphics, videos. Uh, however, it is now that LRM is so powerful, we have OCR capability. You can do that as long as you have a right structure of the graph, semi-structure, unstructured. The holistic approach ensure comprehensive view of the competitive landscape, enable more informed strategic decision making. Okay, so one of the, this is, uh, I'm gonna just very briefly go through this. It's just an uh, example of the, some of the thing, like um, problem of a vector's rag, you know. Vector rag is really, really bad in answering limited numerical reasoning. Vector store Excel, you know, at semantic similarity, but struggle with complex numerical calculation. This is why uh, for uh, marketing analysis uh, that I'm building the chatbot for, uh, they actually, Rely on number instead of just, you know, returning example like this. I kind of, if you ask like, uh, what is the Apple uh, revenue uh, between uh, two, uh, you know, what's the revenue in 2022? They, they probably will give you a bunch of this uh, kind of a passage, right? Uh, retrieval graph instead of uh, this kind of a very very precise thing. Like uh, the the answer is, uh, you know, 
uh, got knowledge trust able to, because the, about the, the, the data is already there in structured form. The data source assume a knowledge graph name, this particular, uh, in, in this particular case, Apple financial data. The query will be able, to, the query engine will be able to select the, the revenue figure from 2021 to 2022 and, and then do a function call. The function call will eventually give, come out with 15.23, which is exactly what the marketing guy was looking for, a very quantitative stuff that most of the decision were based on that because you have evidence, not just some passage that you retrieve from the data. It's basically evidence-based decision making is very important for this kind of uh, complicated rack system that, you know. So um, there's a jungle out there right now. You can use different kind of uh, 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 thing to build your, uh, you know. Uh, this is just a snapshot of that, you know. You can actually use uh, Langchain plus Chroma to, to build your own rack, and then you also can combine that with your knowledge graph. Depend on, on, on your user case, okay? If, if, if the, this slide show that the rack and the KAG can be built with many, okay? I adopt that wisdom graph in red color. Normally, you will see if client is just asking for a simple rack that perform product information query, you can just use a simple Chroma DB with LM agent. And if you start to ask so complicated questions like how can I beat my competition based on my current market share? Well, this will be able, the, the, uh, the, the, the thing that I will probably be adopting is knowledge graph here with a uh, graph DB plus cipher query and it will create an A and also train my rack to perform several loop of, uh, we call it multi-hop query. And this probably will give a very good answer. So, uh, and then it comes to the another question. When I was trying to extract my, uh, oh, I think my time is, uh, is almost up. Okay, so anyway, this is like to say, uh, the first speaker talked about the extraction, right? There's a very simple way to extract on the right side is like automated, totally automated LIM graph transformer. On the left is like manual. I would probably re recommend the center hybrid model, which is like, after you use the LIM to extract your graph, you ask the interview, the, the expert that you're gonna build uh, to, to build your taxonomy. Right, to prone the graph, we call it proning the graph, remove a lot of relationship, that, then that, that will be okay. And um, I will try to just highlight this. This is the result of benchmark that we did. Okay, anybody ask you, you know, why you want to use graph, right, or KAG? Okay, first is accuracy. I had achieved 91% because it's really good in extract structure. Second is flexibility, 85%. Third is reproducibility, reproducibility deterministic. And then the fourth one, traceability. And finally, uh, most important is scalability. So in conclusion, by leveraging structural nature of Western knowledge graph, we can significantly enhance the quantitative capability of KAG system and ability more accurate and insightful response to com complex query. By using wisdom-driven system as highlighted, together we can build smarter AI system that can scale and store wisdom with the right framing, potentially surpass the intelligence of the initial expert that we meant to serve. So, we, uh, talk to Jesus, you know. What do Jesus do? Talk to Jesus, he's in, uh, in, in a not booth. This is my good friend. And uh, anybody that wants to build graph, if we have a good uh, so-called LLM graph rack uh, stack on GitHub that um, is sponsored by Neo4j. And out of the box, just spin up your Docker. The next thing you know, your DAX is going to be converted to your graph and you can start happy pruning your graph. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right.